Now, today there are three powers that are competing for the control in Egypt. The army, led by the military council, the Muslim Brotherhood and the network of Islamists, and all the other opposition groups and organizations representing the people. Now let's take them one by one. The military in Egypt has been welcomed by the people. And many Western journalists, when they were in Tahrir, couldn't just understand. They would come and ask me, why do you love the army so much? I mean, they've never seen such uh, scenes of uh, people embracing the army, the army having smiles. And the explanation is that in every Egyptian family, there is at least one member that is in the army, either a brother or a nephew or a father or an uncle and so on. So the army is looked upon really as part of uh, the social tapestry, let's say, of Egypt. People feel much more they can identify with them. There is no hostility and on the contrary, there is a kind of empathy. So the people welcomed the military as a transitional force, but they criticized the generals for having been too slow to deliver on people's demand to bring to justice the kleptocrats. Had, had they done this early enough, instead of doing it now, uh, they would have, um, they would have uh, prevented or they would have diffused, let's say, uh, uh, an explosive situation which came after this, which were the people asking for their rights in every uh, industry and company and society, slowing down the, uh, the, econo the economy and ordinary life. Uh, also, they were slow in elaborating a date certain for constitutional reform. And that is what we are asking for today, a new constitution, not a patched up constitution that they want to give us by, as you saw, the amendments that happened in the referendum. This is refused. This is uh, just to patch up an old garment. The, the, the constitution of 1971 was vanquished when the old regime disappeared. So there was no need really to go through this referendum. But anyway, one of the, I'm, I was not one of the people who saw the negative aspect of the referendum. Of course, it was not very pleasant to have 77% saying yes and 22% saying no. But to me, the positive aspect is that 18 million Egyptians went to the street for the first time time in the Egyptian history. They went, they wanted to participate, they knew that their voice would count. And also the concern and fear of the future brought them down to the street. We hope that there will be three, three times as much in the coming parliamentary elections. Now, also we had asked for an electoral reform, and the electoral reform didn't come. What we're asking for is a, a, is a, a, a system of proportional representation, not majority vote. Proportional representation plus mixed, meaning that independents can run on their own, but most of the people will run on party slates. Why do I say this? I have run myself on a proportional representation slate, and this gives opportunity, this gives more opportunity to women, to Christians, to youth, and to intellectuals. Four sectors of the society who cannot possibly make it in a majority vote because of the thuggery, because of the vote buying, because of traditional attitudes, and so on. So the expedited calendar of the parliamentary elections meant that the army was trying to strike a balance between a timely transition, they said they want to leave after six months, and a sustainable one that provides uh, all voices in society the time needed to prepare for competition. We don't think that the time needed um, is enough. However, this is a fait accompli now. We have four months to prepare. Uh, but we said it more than once, that if the uh, parliamentary uh, elections are expedited and rushed, the only two forces that can stand to benefit 
are the remnants of the old regime, the remnants of the NDP and the Brotherhood. Now let's go to the Brotherhood. The rising force of the Brotherhood and the newly emerging Islamic forces, we don't know where they came from, Salafists, Jihadists, all sorts, along with underground Islamist networks, has prompted panic as to what comes next in Egypt and what comes next might be antithetical to the secular democratic state that was called for by the revolution. A civil, democratic, modern state. That was the call. Not a religious state, not a military state, a civil state. So the, the slogan was La Dinaya, La Askariya, Madaniya, Madaniya. This is what I had just translated. Still, one could argue that the power of the Muslim Brotherhood is at least in part a function of the fact that they have been the only organized political force opposing the regime. And being banned stupidly during these 30 years. Uh, and standing against the dictatorship gave them a certain mystique and gave them popularity, apart from, of course, the social services that they were providing. To my opinion, incorporating them into the formal political arena can go a long way in demystifying them. Uh, they will have to be accountable, they will have to answer what, they, uh, what is their plan, for the economy, for tourism, for culture? How do they see women? How do they see Christians in their uh, vision of an Islamic state? Uh, I said that um, incorporating them in the political arena will do a lot to demystify them, plus the fact that they have been a movement they were never a political party. And there is quite a big difference between a movement, an advocacy movement, even if they went into politics and got 20% last time in, 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 in the year 2000, but they were still not accountable. They were members of parliament. But now there is not the enemy that they wanted to crush, which was the former regime party. So now they're standing on their own, Hopefully, there will be other credible alternatives. And once there are credible alternatives, they will be seen just as another political actor. One could also argue uh, that uh, I would say that the whole movement is split, which is a good sign for us, at least, the secular democratic forces, that there is a beginning of a split within the movement. First of all, there are the young uh, Muslim brothers, the young Ikhwan, who are quite different. It's a generational difference. I, but I am encouraging the new emerging forces, the new political forces, who are mainly composed of uh, youthful elements, to incorporate them with them, because they are different. They have a forward-looking uh, view of the world. They are more tolerant. Uh, they have lived 18 days with the others who are secular and democrats, so uh, I think it would be a good thing. What about the opposition, the civilian opposition forces? Well, against a background of hope, fear, and confusion, Egyptians are, ser are searching for signs of clarity, hoping to discern the direction of a state led by a semi-secretive military council that was brought to power by a revolution, which they protected, I repeated, but it was a revolution based on demands for dignity, justice, rule of law, and in particularly an end to corruption. 